My name is David Tran and this is Lex TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic student. We have chiropractor Dr. Bradley Rausch in Stowe, Vermont. Dr. Brad has been in practice for 33 years. He has offices in the Dominican Republic, Arizona, and soon in Europe. You may not know, but he is a kick-ass surfer, kite surfer. <laughs> Dr. Brad, welcome to Lex TV. Thank you, David. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. So let's get straight to it. Uh, how did you get your start in chiropractic? Um, well, I'll tell you, it was um, a pretty amazing story. My, um, when I was three years old, uh, I was an only child, and my mom was pregnant and uh, gave birth to a, to a brother for me. And uh, he, uh, he was born seemingly healthy and normal. And uh, when he was about eight months old, my parents realized that he, uh, he didn't develop the way normal kids do. He, he wasn't sitting up, he wasn't rolling over, he wasn't even like holding a, a rattle or a bottle. And this is back in the 1950s. And um, so they brought him to the pediatrician who said that some kids develop slower than others, give it some time, which they did, and uh, until he was about 14 months old. And at 14 months, he wasn't sitting up, he wasn't holding a bottle, he wasn't interacting, you know, the way kids do, certainly at that age. They brought him back to the pediatrician, who then said, something's wrong here, we're going to refer you to specialists, and this is now 1959, I believe. And they did a battery of tests on my brother, and they sat my parents down and said they, they were sorry to inform them that uh, my brother had a severe case of cerebral palsy, in fact, so severe that he would never walk, he would never talk, he would be totally disabled, and that the best course of action would be to put him in a state hospital. And back in the 1950s, we lived in New York City. State hospitals in New York State were just horrible, dreadful places. And obviously, my parents were very distraught at that news. And uh, so they went home to think about what they were going to do next. And it just so happens, my dad was on a bowling league. And he was explaining to one of the guys on the team about the quandary they were in, trying to determine you know, what they should do for their son. And on that team was a chiropractor who overheard my dad telling the story. And this chiropractor, Dr. Arthur Azerski, went up to my dad and said, look, I believe I can help your son. My dad had no experience in chiropractic whatsoever, but he went home, spoke to my mom, and they decided to bring my brother to the chiropractor. They had nothing to lose. So they started bringing the car, you know, my brother Scott to the chiropractor three times a week. Within a month's time, he started interacting more, started holding on to things. Then he started uh, uh, sitting up. He started crawling and then ultimately walking, which the MDs said he would never do. And now, today, Scott is uh, 55 years old. He lives in Boca Raton, Florida. He does have cerebral palsy, but uh, he's got a great life. He's got a job. He's got a girlfriend. Uh, he's doing great. And if my parents would have listened to the medical doctors and put my brother in a, in a, in a state hospital, I guarantee you he'd be dead today. So, you know, oftentimes chiropractic students will hear from some, some chiropractors that well, chiropractic saves lives. And, and many times the students don't believe it. Well, in my case, in my family, it's true. That chiropractor saved my brother's life. And from the time I was a young child, uh, that had a dramatic impact on me. So as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a chiropractor and, and followed that dream. I mean, that's an amazing story, you know, and, you know, and it's, and, and what's crazy is that you know sometimes we want to say that it's a it's a chiropractic miracle or 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 something you know that's far fetched. But the amazing thing about it is that you know these types of stories happen day in and day out in in plenty of chiropractic offices. And it's only time that you know us as students will be graduating and, and be able to have this massive positive effect on humanity for sure. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree. And you know, like you said, I've been in practice for thirty three years, and you know, we've seen all kinds of changes with people and, and what that chiropractor did which was so amazing was that he removed the interference and and he c reconnected my brother to his innate intelligence and 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 the rest is history exactly and so it, it, it truly is it's it's a great story but it's 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 one that's impacted thousands of lives by that one chiropractor in that one instance saying that to my dad Look how that impacted my life. And now I work all over the world with chiropractic, and I work with students and 
trying to help them out, and it just spreads exponentially, like what BJ Palmer talked about. Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, and you know, like you had just said that you know, like you do have offices all around the world, which is you know, no small feat for sure. So, why should current students right now consider looking at chiropractic internationally? That's a great question, uh, and something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, for the first 29 years of my career, I practiced in the United States. Uh, I was an associate for one year in Stowe, Vermont. Uh, then went back to New York, which is where I was from, and opened an office there and was there for about 11 years. Then I moved back to Stowe, practiced 17 years here in Stowe. If the 29 years in the U.S. healthcare delivery system, I pretty much had had enough. It became incongruent with my value system managed care, dealing with insurance companies, government oversight, Medicare craziness. So uh, I started looking into international opportunities. And uh, through a number of different situations that they came up, I started uh, doing mission trips with Peter Morgan. And through that, I met Liam Schubel. We started opening up uh, clinics in the Dominican Republic. I was in Italy this past summer for six weeks covering an office for Ray Drury, uh, upper cervical, knee chest, chiropractic center, which I just loved. It was amazing. And now I've got friends in chiropractic all over the world. That being said, uh, what's amazing about chiropractic in other countries uh, is that in the United States, we certainly know that, that medicine has the cultural authority uh, on, on health care. And the vast majority of people in society think of chiropractic from a standpoint of neck pain, back pain, musculoskeletal. Uh, it's a different situation in other cultures. When I was in Italy this summer, we were seeing people, multiple sclerosis, ALS, uh, cerebral ataxia, all kinds of wild stuff that you don't see that often in chiropractic offices anymore. Years ago we did in chiropractic, but it's kind of morphed into this like musculoskeletal thing. Uh, so one of the benefits of going international is that it just opens up so many opportunities to see the, the general population, uh, and, and I love that. And, and we both know, David, that chiropractic's for everybody. You know, it doesn't have to be an MS patient or a back pain patient. It's just for everybody. And, and I, I have a real challenge with the current system in the United States of healthcare and how chiropractic has been pigeonholed the way it has and how through with all the documentation and the soap notes and the government oversight it's taken away a lot of the freedom of how I practiced for many years in the United States. It's gotten more and more restrictive so I feel that internationally I could be more congruent with my value system so I can go to Italy or the Dominican Republic and I can practice how I believe chiropractic should be practiced, focusing 100% on analyzed, analyzing, detecting, correcting subluxations, and, and spreading the chiropractic word. And the people in general, it's been my experience, that they, they haven't pigeonholed us into this uh, musculoskeletal uh, realm. So it's, you know, we can give, uh, uh, we call them charlas, their, their talks in the Dominican Republic. And you'll get, you know, 100, 150 people there. And you just tell them the story. And they're so excited. It's one of the beautiful things about chiropractic is that it's logical. It makes sense. And then once people are under care, they see the changes in their lives. So I, I love what I'm doing internationally. And, and I believe that. Also, from a lifestyle standpoint, one of the things I recommend to, to students when they're in school is because they ask me, you know, where do you think I should practice? And I say, practice where you want to live. I live in Stowe, Vermont. I'm a skier. I love it up here. It's a great place to raise a family. If you're interested in Italy or you're interested in Germany or you're interested in South America or, you, I don't know, you're into surfing, you want to go to Hawaii, whatever, find the place where you want to live and then open a practice there. A, a number of years ago, uh, n actually only about two years ago, I went to one of the chiropractic colleges and I lectured at a lot of different schools and I went to see one of the uh, uh, staff people there that it was, I think the office of, uh, I don't know, they had to do with you know helping graduates once, once they graduate. And I walk into the office and this woman who was very pleasant, she was so proud of this huge map of the United States and had all these little pins in it. It showed kind of the demographics of where there were the most chiropractors. 
And she felt that, boy, you know, you really need to go a place where there's not many chiropractors. You have a better chance of surviving there. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked at it from a demographic standpoint. I think that's ridiculous. Where do you want to live? There are thousands or millions of people there. Serve them. Get the message out. Talk chiropractic. Have love in your heart. And uh, so the world is our playground. And I'm, I'm starting to do more stuff in Europe now, and it's been very exciting. I was, I, I was in Norway and Sweden uh, a few months ago. I was in Croatia looking at opportunities there. Uh, I think international chiropractic is it's inc- it's it's limitless. Exactly. So I, I think you can feel my my enthusiasm. <laughs> exactly. You know, and and why not practice the greatest profession in the world with one of your favorite hobbies, which is kite surfing, and <laughs> like in the Dominican Republic, which is the kite surfing capital of the world. So well, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put Cabarete, Dominican Republic, and that's like the kite surfing spot, the main spot in the DR, and. And it is the 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 uh, hot spot in the Caribbean and, and one of the top ten places in the world. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it certainly <laughs> works for me. Exactly. You know. <laughs> you know. And that's where actually where we first met. And what like one of my fir- favorite things about doing a chiropractic mission trip was the end of the night where we kind of all came together and had not so much a philosophy night, but it's more so just kind of getting together and sharing. You know our our experiences and connecting, you know, kind of heart to heart. Um, and my favorite times was always listening to you speak. Um, and what would you pretty much give a student listening or watching this uh, video right now uh, as your greatest advice or your greatest takeaway that, you know, six months from now, seven months from now, or even before they graduate, you know, that they want to just kind of remember about it? Well, I, I'll tell you. I call it the work, and I kind of stole that term from a woman uh, named Byron Katie. She does seminars, and and she calls her stuff the work, and she certainly used that term way before I did, but but I I, I like what it means. This is what I see. So many chiropractic students, they go through school. Many of them believe that if they study hard, they get good grades, they pass their courses, they pass the national boards that they're going to graduate with the information necessary in order to go out into practice and be successful. And my experience has been, and with the hundreds of students I've worked with, is that that is just not the case. That, sure, you've got to pass your your courses, and you've got to pass the national boards to get a license, but the vast majority of information that you're going to use in practice and that's going to make a difference in your life and the lives of the people that you serve is the stuff that you're going to be doing outside of chiropractic school, going to the seminars. For example, I'm a speaker at New Beginnings, and I think New Beginnings is great. I've gone to, I can't tell how many DE seminars I've been to. I used to go to Renaissance seminars, and Guy Reekman and Joe Felicia did it. And I surrounded myself with chiropractic, and I learned as much as I could. And so developing that passion to learn as much as you can about chiropractic, not the book knowledge, not just the pathology and the diagnosis and all that, but truly chiropractic information, and then spend time with chiropractors. One of the greatest things about going to New Beginnings, for example, is not so much what happens in the, in the lecture halls and, the, and, the, and, the, and what the speakers are saying, it's what happens outside of that, hanging out with people. I was just at the IFCL Global Summit in the DR, and you know what? The seminar was great, but even better than that was hanging out at the pool with Andreas Soderstrom from Sweden, Talking to you know Jim Dubell as we were you know waiting online to get food and and hanging out with just amazing people and connecting. So I call the work doing all that stuff. Making this is it a sacrifice for a student to spend the money to go on a mission trip? Absolutely, but it's the best money you'll ever spend. You know firsthand, David, how powerful a mission trip is and how it can change your perspective. I'm opening up an office in in Arizona. Very shortly. We already have the space. We're just getting it all ready. It's going to open up very soon. And I'm, I'm doing it with a student that just graduated from Life University, and we're going to be partners. And I met him on a mission trip, and, and it changed his life. So if you do the work, if you focus on chiropractic, learn as much as you can while you're in school, as much as you can about chiropractic, go to the seminars, hang out with the chiropractors. You do that, and I guarantee you it'll have a huge impact once you graduate and, and help you 
ensure your success in helping and serving the multitudes. So that, well, I think that's my best advice. Oh, yeah. And that's such, such valuable information for sure and wisdom right there. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. Brad, and for sharing with us today. It's been my honor. Thank you, David, for the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So if you want to connect with Dr. Brad directly, uh, check out my links below. Every week I will be uploading a new interview with another giant in the chiropractic profession. If you like this video, please share it with your classmates. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. My name is David Tran and this was Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic students.